So hi, hi everyone, um, and thanks so much for joining uh, the presentation tonight. So um, Thomas and I are thrilled to present our GeoHeritage project, House for Cork uh, Geology in the City, uh, that we've developed uh, this year. So we are going uh, to give this lecture today um, as part of National Heritage Week. Uh, and because um, this year Heritage Week goes uh, mostly uh, online, we prepared uh, a series of online activities uh, related to the geology and uh, geological heritage of uh, Cork City. So all those activities um, are available on our website, hardcorecork.ie, and uh, you can access the different activities on uh, an icon um, called Heritage Week. And uh, you'll have access to different activities that we'll um, detail a little bit uh, later. So a little bit of background um, uh, about uh, us, the organizers, Thomas and I. So my name is Aud. Uh, I'm originally from Belgium, uh, specifically Brussels. I study, I study geology and paleontology. And then uh, I arrived in Cork almost three years ago. And that's when I met uh, Thomas. Uh, so we are, we are both passionate about running, and we met um, in a running group called um, Front Runners Corp. Um, and uh, yeah, it was really, uh, it was a great, um, uh, great, it was really great to uh, meet Thomas. Um, so we both have a great interest for uh, rocks and fossils, and uh, we discovered um, that we both wanted to have something new in Corp. Um, so that's why we decided to um, uh, develop a project uh, around Cork to your heritage. So, um, Thomas, can you introduce uh, yourself? Yes, I can. So, Oud uh, and Sinead have already given an introduction to kind of like how Oud and I met. So, I'm just going to say, yeah. Uh, it's always a lovely knowing you, Oud, and just having been working on this project personally, I have been probably interested about geology since I was very, very young and kind of feeding into then attending a bachelor's or an undergraduate degree in geology was something that kind of felt natural to me before I changed over then afterwards. But the kind of the desire and the kind of, you know, um, love for it still has lingered by. So that has fed into this project. But yeah, I'll leave it back to you. Oh, so, yeah, by... Um... Uh, developing this project, we really wanted to share our passion for rocks and fossils with the general public and uh, especially with uh, younger people, with children and teenagers. And we really hope that with that project, we develop um, new interest in geology um, amongst um, the youngest um, and maybe having new uh, students in geology. That would be, uh, would be great. So, um, we developed uh, a new that new outreach project uh, last year, and we applied for funding uh, through geological survey uh, heritage grant schemes. Uh, our project uh, was successful, so we uh, really um, got the resources, the financial resources to develop this project, and we started working on it uh, in January this year. It was a little bit difficult at first because of all the COVID restrictions, but um, we are now well advanced uh, uh, in the project. And I uh, will show you uh, today a little bit of what we've done so far and uh, what we plan to have uh, completed by uh, the autumn uh, this year. So, um, our Geo Heritage project is articulated around a series of uh, key products or topic. Uh, the first one is uh, the website. So the website is really the main platform where, where we are showing the different activities we have developed for uh, Hardcore Cork. Um, we really decided to have all the activities available on the website to have something that's um, uh, very interactive and also fun to use. So in that sense, um, all the content is adapted for computers, but also uh, smartphones. 
So um, besides the website, we also um, made, created uh, digital reconstructions of uh, past landscapes. So Cork was not um, always as it is, um, as it is today. So the landscape uh, changed a lot. Um, so that's what we uh, would like to show with those um, 3D reconstructions and we'll uh, go through them a little bit later today. And then we have developed as well a series of uh, walking trails. We have uh, five uh, walking trails in total. We have three um, walks in the city center. We have one walk center on UCC campus and we have another one um, that's looking at the old uh, quarries, old sandstone and limestone quarries um, that existed in the past um, in Cork City and that are now uh, disused. We are also preparing a small scale exhibition um, that will be um, held in Cork Public Museum, hopefully um, for this autumn will display um, a few rocks and fossils as well. Um, each uh, rock and fossil will be um, accompanied by a QR code. So um, when scanning the QR code, you'll be able to have uh, more information about those uh, rocks and fossils. So we really wanted to have an exhibition that's um, small, very simple, but at the same time, um, you have more information, more content available on uh, the website um, hardcorecore.ie. And uh, finally, we are also preparing content uh, for schools. So we uh, talked to uh, geographic teachers to see um, what they wanted to have um, in terms of content to uh, explain to the, the children um, the local geology. So that's um, also something that we have um, completed by um, this autumn. So, um, oh, all this cork. So, um, cork is, uh, and I said, pretty old. Um, so, we are here, uh, let's say, at time uh, zero, age of humans, and we are going. Um, back in time towards the left here. And in Cork, the uh, oldest rocks are from this uh, period that we call Devonian. So in geology, we, um, we divide time in uh, periods. That's important to, um, to be able to know, uh, yeah, to know a little bit more about the context of when the rocks were deposited and so on. So in Cork, uh, the oldest rocks are from here, the late Devonian. It's about 380 million years ago. So that's uh, a very long time ago. And that can be uh, sometimes very difficult um, to grasp. Um, and then beside those uh, sandstones, we have limestones. They are, they are a little bit younger. Uh, they are 350 million years old. So a little bit younger, but still 30 million years uh, younger than uh, the sandstones. And then um, we need to uh, do a big, a huge gap in time, a huge um, step uh, forward in time to arrive to um, the quaternary. So in Cork, um, we also have very recent uh, deposits from the quaternary period. So a few thousand years ago, let's say, 13,000 years ago. And uh, those sediments were deposited during um, the last uh, ice age. So um, yeah, to summarize, uh, Cork has very old uh, rocks, the sandstones and the limestones, but also very uh, recent uh, sediment, very recent uh, in uh, geological time, uh, of course. So um, now let's talk about Cork's geology. So Cork's geology is relatively uh, simple, if I can say. Um, so here is 
um, geological map of uh, Cork City. So for those of you who are not familiar with um, geological maps, uh, there are uh, maps that show the locations of different types of rocks and also some uh, geological features uh, like uh, fault zones, for example. So in Cork, we have, um, as I said before, sandstones and limestones. You'll find the sandstones here um, in brown, so on the northern and southern part of the city. And then you'll find the limestones here in the valley in between um, those two brown um, layers. So, for example, if you are uh, if you live um, in the city center here, uh, you'll have limestones beneath your feet. But if you live in St. Luke's here, you'll have uh, sandstones beneath your feet. And actually, we can see sometimes that uh, the soil uh, is red um, in those areas, and it's due to the uh, sandstone, to the red uh, sandstones. So um, let's look at what sandstones uh, look like um, nowadays. So here we have an example of an old quarry. It was the a Brickfield Quarry in Cork City, um, located in Lower Glenmire Road along the Lee River. And that's a superb example of sandstones because you can see that actually not all sandstones in Cork are red. So we have red sandstones here, but here we also have green sandstones. And, um, that difference in color uh, gives information about uh, the landscape, about uh, the environment in uh, which the sediments were deposited. So here um, on the right side, you have uh, an example of a red sandstone coming from a similar um, rock exposure. And here um, on top, you have a fossil. So What's really interesting is that you can also find fossils in those uh, sandstones. And uh, here is the fossil of um, one of the first true trees um, called Archaeopteris. So that uh, fossil is very, uh, very important for um, in paleontology in general. So that's really, um, that's really incredible that we could find such uh, fossil in Cork. So now in terms of what those uh, sandstone um, mean in terms of uh, the landscape, we reconstructed um, that uh, environment. So Cork 380 million years ago looked um, pretty much like this, which was a huge uh, floodplain with meandering uh, rivers. And on the banks of the river, you could find uh, small plants. So those, those uh, small plants were quite primitive compared to what uh, we can find today. Um, those plants were called uh, lycopods. And then uh, further away from the river, you could find um, forests uh, made of that um, fossil called Archaeopteris. Uh, sometimes uh, that trees, those trees could even reach um, 30 meters in height. So um, they were really uh, important um, for the environment at that time. So now um, let's look at the uh, uh, limestone. So the, the limestones that um, made up the valley in Cork. Um, so here you have um, the picture of a typical gray limestone, the one that you can find uh, in Cork City. And uh, in that limestone, you can find fossils. So um, that limestone um, represents a marine environment. So um, uh, an ancient sea. And then you'll be able to find um, fossils, uh, fossil animals that lived in that sea. For example, here you have um, the fossil of um, an animal that we call a gonotite. So that looked like um, an ammonite. Um, and then you have other kinds of shells in that limestone. And you can even find um, 
big shelves like this in building stones in uh, Cork City. So here um, it's a building stone um, located on uh, UCC campus. So um, the limestone environment was very different from uh, the sandstone environment. It was um, a shallow, so Cork at that time, 350 million years ago, was uh, covered by a shallow sea, tropical sea. Uh, and in that sea, you could have, uh, you could see uh, sharks, you would have mollusks like this goniotite, or you would have autochones, you would have uh, corals as well, um, you would have sponges that we call uh, bryozoan, and also um, crinoids, so that's um, animals that, that actually look like plants, that they were um, real animals, they were fixed um, to the seabed by um, their stem, and then they would feed uh, by filtering water with their um, arms. So this is what cork looked like um, during the early Carboniferous period, 350 uh, million years ago. And then, um, so cork also has very young sediments. So they are not consolidated like uh, sandstone or limestone uh, in cork. Uh, those uh, sediments are from the uh, last ice age. So they were deposited uh, by, by um, a nice sheet um, around uh, 13,000 years ago. And those glacial deposits, they actually can be found in cavities in the limestones in Cork, but also um, a little bit further away from the city uh, where you have um, very beautiful um, quaternary um, deposits of crop. So in terms of the landscape, uh, the quaternary landscape in Cork, it looks like this. So you would have uh, an extended uh, lee valley, and uh, in that valley you would have um, loads of uh, river channels uh, that join together, and those um, rivers came from um, melting ice, so the ice sheet would melt and would form those uh, rivers that would then transport sediments uh, and form those uh, glacial uh, deposits. So um, those glacial deposits were usually laid down in, the, uh, in cavities in the Carboniferous limestones that uh, make up uh, the uh, Leven. Um, so uh, I'll not give uh, the floor to Thomas and he will talk about uh, cultural heritage and the activities we developed um, for heritage week. So I'll stop sharing. Oh, oh, is my audio okay? It seems like there is. Okay, cool, awesome. Whew. Thank you so much. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's do this. And I'm just gonna go in and actually start the presentation immediately. Right, so I will just spend the next couple of minutes just talking about the project that we've been working on um, and kind of our thoughts going into the reconstruction or just showed there. So back in December, just before everything went into complete and utter lockdown here in Ireland, um, we got the news that we had gotten the resources and the funding to develop this project and obviously we were delighted. And um, so we started thinking about what we would like, obviously we knew what we wanted to do, but we started thinking about how to execute and, and everything. And it all comes back to Cork. I don't know if you, if you are in Cork these days, you will see there's a lot of red and white flags around these days because of the upcoming match. And you, it's hard, as soon as you kind of get into the mentality we've been into, you kind of always think about sandstone, limestone, sandstone, limestone because the sandstone red represents the red color and the limestone represents the white color. Whether that is the reason why Cork has the red and white colors, we don't know, but it's a great story to kind of build on. So we've always, the last couple of months, we've been looking around the city, thinking about ways to show different parts of the um, exit of, of our project. Uh, one aspect of that is 
taking and making a lot of the geological knowledge, but also artifacts, if you could kind of say treasures uh, that have been found over the years. So this is a, a fossil of an Archaeopteryx uh, so kind of branch that was found here in Cork in the city. Um, and what we is, is that some of these fossils are a bit fragile. So some of them we've scanned them and as kind of for using photogrammetry and um, with great help from Larissa, also from Oates department, and then have these readily available. And these you can also investigate yourself uh, onto our website. Um, so back in January, when we started working on it, we were kind of like, okay, we need to learn as much as possible because we'd have an idea, a broad idea of the, of the local geology, but we weren't really certain about how things were probably set up. So we read a lot of literature and what you can see over here is well, it's it's a very kind of generalized timeline of the events that we kind of summarize from reading. And some of the things you might dispute if you know a bit more about Cork's geology, but this is what you summarize from a lot of the reading um, there is out there. So both kind of seeing how the area has moved, how climate has changed, what other things happened in Ireland, because Cork really is the geology is part of a huge jigsaw puzzle that is basically explaining the entirety of how all the continents uh, have moved around. And then as the next one here is a, basically a sketch up in the upper right corner here. This is a sketch, the early pre kind of early sketch and our preconceptions of what we thought that we would create um, based on what we've kind of read. And up to this point, we hadn't talked to any experts and everything. So you will see there's a lot of changes coming from this, but this emerged concept art. We also did like this volcano because we know there are a few volcanic deposits around in the area, but we weren't really sure on how far we could go with them. So we said, oh, we'll show a volcano on land. And now we know that there likely wasn't any volcanoes on land during the immediate kind of area here in Cork in, when you look back in the geological history. But then we have a nice sketch of a volcano out in the middle of a huge desert, which is also nice to have. Um, and we also, one other aspect as Ode also mentioned is that we want to give this as educational material for schools. So we've been talking to geography teachers about what they, how they teach geology, uh, geological principles to their children. And if we could use localized examples from Cork to kind of inspire the students. Um, so both using the reconstructions, feeding into the imagination, but also giving a little bit of the, the kind of the, the kind of concept art, if it is that some of it can be of use. And also using kind of remedies, QR codes, if you can apply a QR code to a rock, can you then take scan the QR code, be taken onto a page with either a description of the rock in question or the reconstructions themselves. So the next step was looking into technology. What you see down here in the corner is like an early kind of, this is within a little software called tree where you can generate trees basically on parameters. And these were then fed into the reconstructions that we then did. But it was also coming back to Cork because again, that's what this whole thing is about. Looking at the history and looking at how the rocks have been used all around the area and seeing, walking around the city, seeing where is there is an interesting story? What could we kind of say about this for instance? So um this is from the Finbar's cathedral over here with the cork red marble lovely lovely little fossils inside of it um and but also discovering kind of looking at old cork maps and seeing where were their quarries where were their lime kilns around the city and trying to create that onto a, a route so we have one as a quarry uh walking tour or get to the walking tours that kind of takes you through the historical uh, dimensions of that and again, feeding on to then starting the photogrammetry to scan the rocks. And then we started with first renders already at the end of January, we're kind of conceptualizing some landscapes. And um, so the first one over here is an early Devonian render we did. And we were kind of having mountains and huge hills next to, and then we started talking to experts at UCC and they were like, there weren't really hills or mountains that close. Could you remove them? Okay, we'll remove them. Could you actually make the landscape flat? Yeah, we can make the landscape flat. Could you actually set more lush forests in and stuff? And so that fed a lot of these reconstructions and kind of make us bounce back, but it was really helpful in terms of getting something um, that we could agree upon and that they could agree upon. 
Another example is the volcano here. Again, we really wanted volcanoes into it because who doesn't love a volcano? Who doesn't love a volcano? Um, but then we showed this and an early render and they were like, uh, it's too close. It wouldn't have been that close to the city. And then it was like, okay, where were there likely to have been a volcano? Uh, up by Budavent, up by North Cork. Okay, we'll have a volcano a little bit further away. So we just took the volcano and placed it further away from the cameras, you know. Um, so that volcano is far away in the final render. And again, getting the mountains here, just removing them as far as away and having another render where the landscape is still very elevated. So we had to also kind of flatten it. Um, and so here comes the construction of the kind of 3D assets of it. Um, so for instance, Usually you would in this case use what you call a 3D terrain generator, which is a basically a 3D software where you can um, basically run parameters, uh, make it erode and um, kind of lift uh, using geological kind of principles and landscapes. But what we kind of opted for was a little bit more hand modeling approach to it. So for instance, here's the volcano, what it kind of a model of it, what it looks like up close, um, high resolution sculpted and some of the creatures, for instance, were done from scratch. This is Oxeropoda here, which is a fossil from Kilkenny that is actually um, found in uh, the same rock layers, what we call the same formation that we see here in Cork. Um, and there's some good articles on the recent find findings uh, about this creature, uh, which we modeled them from scratch because there was no way to find a 3D model of it. And then there is the, this shark here, Lasudus, um, which where we found, we bought a 3D model of a shark and then basically reshaped it, kind of took it backwards in time to make it look um, like something that would have been a bit more primordial. And down here to the bottom left, we see kind of what the um, final Devonian close-up river landscape looks like um, without plants, without anything. So this is inside the 3D software, it looks very basic. This is before high resolution details such as mud and desiccation tracks kind of come in. And also just a kind of a, in, in the 3D software kind of overview of what the um, Carboniferous um, seabed environment looks like. So these are kind of like the final ones that we have now. Um, you can see the volcano, yay, got it in. And the Quaternary Ice Age uh, view here where we see the kind of the Lee Valley and it's going to say like at this point infant stage just basically um, before it kind of gets filled up with sediments and the river kind of narrows a bit and the Carboniferous landscape down here as Ode also showed and under we have a little bit with the um, we have a little bit under the um, the lake bed of a Devonian um, sea or uh, lake or river actually it would probably have been a river more than anything um, with the Conandes beach, Conandes beach, which is also a species from Kilkenny, um, but is also again in the same rock formation. So borrowing a little bit from other areas in Ireland, but kind of getting it all together to form this jigsaw puzzle or to be a part of this jigsaw puzzle. So we also started animating these, which is also a huge feat in itself. So just kind of showing you how we're turning this into like these little animated pieces where you can actually get a more volumetric glimpse of those, of the creatures. So that's kind of coming in and then saying that we would like to have something that could be immersive, that is not just a picture, but something where you kind of look at it and you're like, oh, Jesus, these creatures are actually alive ones. Um, and next step is to have these 360 degree uh, renders when we finally have these approved 360 degree renders where you can actually place yourself in them um, and then kind of, is like a 360 degree video, um, explore these environments. And just to show the crinoids here, um, also that Ode mentioned earlier, that you can actually kind of get relatively close up on many of the, the, the things inside the 3D scenes. Um, they do take a long time to render, so we have to be strategic about what it is um, that we want to show from them. Um, but yeah, and also here, the kind of little lake side of a little Devonian forest up here in this corner. So the next step is taking these and 
is our Jira Heritage Walks. And these have, are developed by ONI. We've been, again, walking around the city. You can explore them on the link that we've provided. This is our main activity for you to do. Please do get back to us about them. We have the north, um, a little city walk around the north area of the city center, kind of it's done so you can go in and explore it via Google Earth file. So what you have to do is actually download Google Earth first. What we'll do in the future is have the more browser fixed. So, um, and then also the south, um, uh, along the south part of the River Lee. But for you now, if you are super interested, what I want you to do is after this presentation is just go into hardcorecork.ie. Um, oh, and I've just put this website together in WordPress and we were just like, okay, let's just have something. And um, we have a professional web developer working on the real website in the meanwhile, but go on to Heritage Week and just play with it and go on to send us some information. What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Because we really could use the feedback and we'd like to hear from people. And on that note, I just want to say that there, you can follow us on Instagram as well at Hardcore Cork, um, and you can write to Ode and I. If you have any questions or any comments about what you kind of see up there, it's not completely done, but at least you kind of have something to play with. It's a cool little video as well. You can look at four of the rock samples, and you can also take two of the walks. And also go in and stan the uh, Cork Geological Association, um, Kind of, you can be a member of the association and um, do send an email to Betty Hicks if you want to kind of like have any inquiries, check out their social media. Um, but in any case, send them some love and thank you so much for giving us a platform to talk about this. And some acknowledgement. Thank you all these people here um, for helping us uh, with this. It wouldn't have been possible with you guys, without you guys. So yeah, that's it.